Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to create a Power Automate Cloudflow that will create an alert in Teams anytime a high priority case is created in Salesforce and assigned to a particular queue. This will allow us to stay on top of cases that require immediate response. Let's get started. So in Power Automate, I'm going to select Automated Cloudflow. And we're just going to call this high priority case alert. And our trigger is going to be a Salesforce trigger. So if we search Salesforce, we see we have two trigger options. And this is going to be when a record is created and that record is going to be a case. So we need to set the parameters for our trigger. So in this case, our object type is cases. So if we search cases, we can select it here. Now we're going to need to set up the advanced parameter of filter query. So you can either click show all, or you can just click the drop down menu here and select filter query to only show filter query. Now here we need to set our query. So there are really um, two different things that I'm looking at, or actually there's three. The first thing is that I want the status of the case status to be new. So that's going to only pull uh, new cases, right? So for that, the status, the API name for status is status, and EQ means equal, and then we need our single quotes, and then the status is going to be new. The next filter we want is owner ID. And the owner ID in this case, the API name is owner with a capital I, lowercase d. In this case, owner ID is going to be actually the ID that appears in the, U in the URL in Salesforce on the owner, case owner. And in this case, our cases are assigned to a queue. And queues have a unique ID, which began with zero, zero and capital G. Now, for my example here, I'm going to paste in the owner ID for this particular queue that I'm working with. And you can get this from the URL of the page where you can find the Salesforce owner. <laughs> and then the last thing we need is the priority, the case priority. Now I want the, to get the alerts when the priority is high or critical, anything else I don't care about. Um, only create an alert if it's high or critical. And so in this case, because I'm needing to search for two values, I need to put it in parentheses and then I need to add priority. The API name is priority in this case. And then the value is high or priority again equals critical. So high or critical and close that out with the parentheses. Now, one of the tricks of setting up this query is that you might not know how to get the owner ID. So we know the API name is this, but we don't, we might not know how to locate this in Salesforce. And so the trick that I have for that is actually running another query in Power Automate. So let's actually go ahead and do that. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pull um, a random case where the owner ID is the queue um, that we want to insert here. So all we need to do for that is we'll open Power Automate and we're gonna create an instant cloud flow So we'll instant cloud flow, <clears throat> manually trigger. I'm not gonna worry about flow name because I'm just gonna delete this flow right after I've obtained our owner ID. And then we're gonna add an action and we're gonna do a get record. That's a Salesforce action. So if we search get record, you can see it right here. And then the object name is cases. And then all we need to do is go over to Salesforce and grab a random case record ID, as long as that is one that's assigned to the case of uh, the owner to get the owner ID. 
So the record ID here I'm going to put in here is one that I know where the owner is the queue that I'm looking for. So once I've done that, then all I need to do is save. And test. And run. Now our flow ran successfully. We're going to go to the outputs in the body. And then here in this window, you'll be able to find owner ID. You might have to scroll a little bit. And so here it is. So now I have my owner ID and I can copy that and put it into my other flow. So that's how you can get the owner ID. That's one way to do it. Now we have our trigger. So now we need to set up our Teams action, which will create an alert in Teams. So the Teams action, we search Teams here. And we'll click See More. And the action that we want is Post Message. So Post Message in a Chat or Channel. So here it is. And now if you haven't worked with Teams in Power Automate before, you have some options to who to post as. And um, what you wanna make sure before you set this up is that over in Teams, you have that person as an owner on the channel, because if you don't have them as an owner or a member, they won't be able to post. So they need to be included in there, of course. And so I have um, this particular Teams channel so now I need to select my channel. You can also post in a group chat and then select for team ID and then my channel ID. And then lastly, our message. Now the message, the nice thing about this is you can work with HTML. So you can toggle to the code view here, which is a great option. And you can type in your HTML here. So what I want to do for this message is I want to include just some basic things. The first is I'll include the summary. So we can draw from our dynamic content here. So when a record is created and we select summary, and then let's add some line break here. And on the next line, we're going to include a link to case. And for this, we're going to write some HTML. So we're going to do a link that'll take us right to that particular case. So in order to get that, you can hop over into Salesforce and grab the URL of any case number and then paste that in there. Now where the case number, the case ID number is this number right here. So what we need to do is just delete that and then insert dynamic content. And sometimes Power Automate does this thing where it, it loses its spot, the cursor loses its spot. We might actually select this dynamic content and then just click in here one more time. It takes some kind of playing around to get it just right. We have to click see more and then insert the case ID. It looks like it inserted it right where it needs to go. Now we need to close this out and I want this this particular URL to be embedded in inside the case number. So I have dynamic content, <clears throat> see more, and then grab the case number, right? And now um, I forgot to close out this URL here with quotes. And then here we close out our link. So that's embedding this into the case number, dynamic content. And then I'm going to do another line break. And then the last thing I'm going to do is just a little note to the team that says, please review case. And if necessary, take the appropriate action. And now this is a, a, an example where I would actually um, 
make this take appropriate the take the appropriate action i would make this a link also to um, documentation that explains how to um take that appropriate action right the the, the guide the guidelines etc the steps to do the appropriate action i'm not going to do that in this case but you get the idea so now that we have that set up we can save this and we can test it so we're going to start by creating a um, salesforce case we assign it to the training queue when we create it. And we also set it to a high or critical priority. So those are the things that this trigger that will that will essentially set off the trigger to post the alert. So we saved our case. I'll, I'll back out here. And then the last thing we'll do is create that case. So you can test this flow. And then once you've done that, you'll get the alert that will come in and i'm going to give you an example of what that alert looks like and i'm going to pull this over here and you can see here is um, an example of what that will look like and so there's the link to case and if we click on that you can see the url pop up there and that's where it will take you right to that case so that's going to do it for this video i hope that you found this useful and feel free to leave um, questions or comments in the chat below. And as always, I will see you in that next video. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.